Morning, Steve. Morning. Let's start with the news about Cyril Regis this week, a man who did yeah. so much on and off the pitch for this game. Well, I was fortunate enough to know Cyril and played against him many, many times. And one of my earliest memories in football was when I was at Gillingham playing against West Brom. We drew West Brom in the cup. I remember I was a young, naive centre-back and all of a sudden I was pitched against Cyril Regis. And after the game, after coming off, <laughs> battered from pillar to post, um, was, wow, that's some player. And of course, back then, the abuse, which is only a few years ago, really, what he put up with and how he had conducted himself and how he handled himself. And I think I go with a lot of people in to say that he did wonders for everybody concerned, especially the black players. You know, we're only talking about the 70s and 80s here. We're not talking about the 30s or 40s. He, um, he was instrumental in and all this was a really, really genuinely good man. And I think we're like all the football world was shocked and saddened because the condition he was in was fantastic when last time I seen him. So we're condolences go course go out at this time to his family who who will be the ones who lose him forever and he'd be greatly missed because I think as I said, how many Black players can look up to him and he was the way forward, you know, and um, I remember talking and knowing Viv Anderson for years too, you know, who was the first black player to play for England. So, you know, now when you look at it, you would think it would be impossible. That was only 20, 30 years ago. Um, so, greatly missed, um, but a really, really top, top fella. Well said. Uh, great opportunity for four in a row now. First time since September we can do that. Well, it's important that you put little runs together. Um, they're never easy, these games. I think that's what's the, the, the difficulty of the championship. Out there in the big wide world, it's, it's a given. And it ain't. You know, Barnsley are always, always... I've got the highest respect for their young coach in Paul Heckenbottom. They always mount a challenge against you. Last week, I've just watched the video twice, that Wolves did not attempt on goal. So, it's not going to be a pushover. We've given ourselves a good opportunity. We've played well of late. Second half against Notts Forest last week was arguably as well as we've played for a long, long time. I thought we were in complete control of the game, which was good to see. Only 19 to go now, the kind of finishing line's in sight. Does that change anything with regard to 19 the 19 to go in the finishing line's in. I've said many, many times, when it comes down to just 10, 9, 8, when the tickly bit starts, it becomes then... It becomes then a real contest and all sorts happens. I keep saying it, we've given ourselves a chance with where we want to be, we're there or thereabouts. Of course, it would be, be nice to be closer to the top team. They're going to, you know, Wolves look as if they're going to run away with it and only a Devon lock could happen with them, you know. Can, I can't see it, but that's the way it looks at the moment. We'd like to be a bit closer to them. However... We are where we are, and consistency-wise, we've been doing well of late, so let's hope that continues. Similarly to the Millwall game, does it show just how tough it is sometimes when you're on that winning run and you yeah. play a side in the bottom half at home yeah, yeah. where you expect to win? Absolutely, and, and I think that is the beauty of the Championship. I think that's why we all found it, find it intriguing, because, well, take for instance last week, you would expect Wolves to go to Barnsley and win. They didn't. You'd expect us at home to Millwall to win. We don't. And that is what the championship is. There's no gulf like you get in the big league. There's no real gulf between teams. So, look, we're pleased the way we've played at the moment. We're getting a lot of people back fit, which can only be good for the second half of the season. Um, I've got 23 training this morning. So, apart from Jed Steer, we've had bad news on him overnight that probably needs an operation on his shoulder. Um, then, um, we're, in, we're in good shape. Do you think Barnsley avoid the drop? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they've got enough to avoid the drop. Um, I haven't really, no, no disrespect, I haven't really analysed of where they are, what they've got and what they've got to do, but of, as I said, I'm a big admirer of the young coach, Paul, and um, he's done well of late. He's sold all his best players and they're still making a fist of it, which can't be easy. 
and picking up on those injuries, what exactly happened with Jed? He was in the cup tie against Peterborough. He's, um, he's done something to his shoulder and done something to the ligaments. And we think even at the time he might have dislocated and put it back. So I think he has the whole, um, he has an operation next weekend, um, which could rule him out for the rest of the season for sure. And Mila Yedinak and Glenn Whelan, how are they getting on? They're both trained. They both trained yeah, yesterday for the first time. So we'll see how again they are today. And it was good to see Codger back in rehab during the week. <laughs> well, look, we'd all like him to be fit. It's, it's fair game to the squad. Well played to the squad to be <coughs> without him practically all season. Not many people could have coped without your centre forward and somebody who scored you 19, 20 goals last year. It's good to see him back around. We wish he was fit, because a fit codger now could make all the difference, but he's not. We'll just have to put up with it. Andre Green going well as well, scored yeah. in the week again. Well, we all know what a talent he is, the kid, and we're just going to box a little bit clever with him. But he looks as if he's in fine nick, and he's had now three or four games. I think that's now 45 and 60 minutes and 90 minutes under his belt. So um, he comes into the equa he'll come into the equation in the second half of the season, that's for sure. Amelia and Glenn, if, if they don't make it, how positive was uh, Bjarnason's performance in the middle there last week? Well, he gives me the biggest problem this week. And it's the nice problem to have as a manager. Competition. Competition is the biggest weapon I have for the squad. And you're right. He had a great 45 minutes. Was excellent at what he'd done. And um, is right in me thoughts for tomorrow because of his performance. And if I'm going to be good to the squad of players then um, I've got a big decision to make. And that's always the hardest, but certainly Burke has put himself in pole position. And Snodgrass's performance last week, where did that rank, not only in his time here, but in all the time you've had him? Well, I, th I think of late he's played very, very well. Um, and I always knew that you get him in the right environment, put a smile on his face, um, and then he can score a goal, create a goal. I thought the quality of the cross last week and the finish from Hogan was the bit of quality in the game. Um, I ain't surprised because you would expect him to have eight, ten assists, eight, ten goals from a wide area. And uh, he's bang on track for that at the moment. And Hogan's been lauding Steve Agnew. How big has he been since he arrived? Well, very quietly. It looks as if he's been here two years, never mind two weeks. I'm good. I'm, I'm pleased. You know, he's, um, he's responded, Steve's worked a bit with him, a new voice with him. And of course, the one thing that Steve or Scotty need, no disrespect, is that goal, that first goal. You could visibly see the confidence oozing out of him again. And all of a sudden, you've got a different player on your hands. And I think that's the most important thing. But Steve's been a big influence on him, I think, which... Which is, which is good. That's why I brought me in here, new voice, bit of something different on the training ground. And um, I'm delighted I've got him, Steve. I've worked with him for a few years at, um, at Hull and he's a very, very good coach. Very, very good coach. And any developments from this time last week on the transfer no, front? No, not yet. Not yet, no. no. OK, and just to finish, uh, your old pal, Ryan Giggs got his first job yeah, in management great. this week. Yeah, great. Welcome to the pleasure, Dom. Giggsy. It's, uh, <laughs> um, I'm delighted because too often great players like him just go off into the media. I'm delighted he's got an opportunity. I hope and he will do well. Um, I wish him the best of luck.